with the message that, that Pastor's been speaking. And uh, how many would agree with me that, that Pastor's just been doing a phenomenal job, amen? <laughs> that there's just been a, a different anointing stepping into this year, what God is doing in his life. And, and not a, only his life, but how many know that the oil, it flows down from the head, flows down to the to the beard, it flows down to the shoulders, and whatever part you are is going to flow down to you, amen? You might be a toe, but it's going to flow, eventually it's going to get down to you, amen? <laughs> well, well, let us pray, amen? Father God, we bless you this morning, God. We are excited, God. We are people that are excited, God, for your presence, excited for worship, excited for praise, God, but more, even more excited for the word of God. Father, we thank you because it's the word of God that is the life of God. It is the, the words of God that are the power of God. Father, we thank you because it is your words that uphold us. They uphold all things. It is your word that, that refine us, that keep us, that teach Teach us, that strengthen us, that builds us up, God. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We magnify your word above all your name this morning, Father. Let your word go forth with clarity today. Let it go forth with power. Let it go forth with, with fire. Spirit of God, I ask you to have your way this morning. Have your way this morning, Spirit of God. In our hearts, in our minds. In our spirits, I pray that your people will not leave the same today. I pray let them not leave the same person that they walked into this house today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this is new. We have a little clock here. I know last time I went over and I, I heard from it, right, uh, from my wife. She let me have it. And I, I try to explain to her, though, like, babe, you know, I've been studying. I had this word, and, and she wasn't hearing any of that. You know, I was like, I, I had this revelation I had to give out, and, and she's like, no. So I'm, I'm going to try my best, even though I got the mic a little, little behind 12, after 12. I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best because uh, God really gave me a word, amen. And uh, he... Uh, kind of been preparing me. He told me in December. I felt like he told me in December that I would be speaking about vision. And he was already showing me what I was going to preach. And uh, Dan, if you can put up there, uh, we're going to open up to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. And uh, we're going to read in the Old King James. I like the Old King James. That's what, when I first got saved a few years back, that's what I got saved reading, the Old King James. So it just it takes me back. And I just love some of the words that it uses. Amen. And it's a familiar, familiar verse because Pastor Wanda uh, spoke about this last month. Amen. How many were here with Pastor Wanda when she spoke about running the race? Amen. So I, I didn't ask her permission to, to come from here. I, I fell from the Lord. But, but God was showing me some things about vision from these verses. Amen. How many know that there's plenty of meat on the bone? Amen. You never run out of meat. On the word of God, amen, that you can, you can meditate on one scripture for months and still, and still eat well, amen, that God's word is me, amen. So Hebrews 12, verse 1, and this is Paul, some, some authors, uh, some historians, they believe that it's Paul, they don't, they don't know who, who wrote uh, the book of Hebrews, but, but many people believe that it was Paul and that he wrote it to, to the Hebrews, he wrote it to, to uh, Jewish believers, and uh, this was uh, just a little background, not, not much, but this was during the apex of, of Paul's ministry. This was when he was, he was uh, uh, ministering, he was going on missionary trips, and he was, he was uh, at the prime of his ministry. So let us read here. This is what he wrote. He says, wherefore seen, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. It says, let us lay aside every weight. Then it says, and the sin which does so easily beset us, and what? It says, he said, let us run with patience the race. Somebody say race. He says, let us run with patience the race that is set before us. He said, there's a, a race that is 
set before us, that is set before each and every one of you, a race that is, that is set before you, it speaks about future. It speaks about destiny. It's set before you. There, there's a race that you are destined to run. There's a race that, that when you run it, it's going to take you to your future. It's going to lead you into your future. What is this race? Somebody say vision. Vision. Vision is the race that God has given each and every one of us to run. God's vision for your life is the race that you're supposed to be running. Somebody say amen. Dan, if you can put up there uh, uh, 2 Timothy 4, 7. And, and somebody, somebody texted me this verse the other day. And uh, I was like, man, this is good. I, I told him. I'm not going to give him any credit today, amen. But I, I told him. <laughs> it, was, it was Pastor CJ, all right. A boy got his hands in everything, boy. <laughs> in the choir. I was thinking about that this morning. Like, man, he's in the choir. He was leadership. In my message, he's all up. He got his hands in everything. He ain't even here. He's preaching. Amen? But he, 2 Timothy 4, verse 7, he sent this to me the other day. And I was like, man, this is good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak about this a little bit. I'm going to put it in my message. And, and this was uh, uh, Timothy. This is now Tim, uh, no, Paul writing this to Timothy. And this is now at the end of Paul's ministerial days, the end of his ministry. He wrote Hebrews 12. It was at the apex, at the prime. Now, towards the end of his ministry, he writes to Timothy. And this is what he writes to Timothy. He says, Timothy, which, who was his spiritual son. He said, he said, Timothy, I fought a good fight. That's good right there. I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Another version, it says, I have finished the race. How did he finish it? I have kept the faith, Timothy. He said, Timothy, I finished the race. I kept the faith. In other words, I've, I've finished the vision. I fulfilled the vision that God has given me. I fulfilled the vision that he called me to run with. How, Timothy? By keeping faith. By keeping faith. See, how many know that it's going to take faith in order for you to finish the race that God has called you to run? It's going to take faith. It's going to take you believing God to finish the race, to run with the vision that God has called you to run with. It's going to take you believing God. It's going to take you trusting God. It's going to take you clinging to God. It's going to take you praying and seeking and getting on your knees and humbling yourself before God and trusting God to see the vision come to pass. Amen? And I believe that, that Timothy was just like in a, in a celebratory uh, a mood here. Amen? How many, ever, how many run, have ever run like a marathon? Any hands? A few hands. Not, not a good analogy then. Um, how, how, many, how many have ever, uh, uh, ever watched on TV someone? <laughs> how many have ever seen a Kenyan runner at the end of a marathon while you're sitting on the couch eating chips? How many? I know I got more hands now. <laughs> Let me see those hands. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How many know that when, when they're passing the finish line, when they're finishing, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how tired they are. It doesn't matter how exhausted, how long they've been running. Those runners, they, 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 they pass that finish line with, with such an excitement. I finish, and I, I feel this is, this is the same uh, uh, spirit that Paul wrote this in. Timothy, I finish. I'm finishing the race. It's been a tough race. It's been a tiring race. I wanted to give up at times. But I'm, uh, Timothy, I'm finishing it. I'm finishing it. I believe that God is calling us to finish. No matter how tired you get. Because the race, it could be tiring. The vision can be tiring. When you don't see the end, when you don't see the end, but that's where faith comes in. 
I wrote this down. Faith is seeing the finish line before you even start the race. Faith is seeing you finish the race, seeing you pass the finish line before you even take a first step. It's going to take faith. It's going to take, look at your neighbor and say, it's going to take faith. Come on, look at your wife and say that. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> it's going to take faith. It's going to take faith, church. It's going to take faith. Then if you can go back to Hebrews 12, 1. That was a little detour. We're going to get back on track now. Amen. Hebrews 12, verse 1. And he says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us and let us run with patience. Somebody say patience. I love this. I love this analogy. I love this thing about running. Amen. I, I used to be a runner. So I, I love this. I can, I can see the picture. I don't run anymore. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> the only running I do is to the store now. <laughs> Got to run to the store, run, get some milk, some diapers, amen? So at 9 o'clock, babe, we ain't got no milk. I'll be back. Make this run. I'm going to make this run, get some milk, eat my bowl of cereal, amen? I love this. It's just a vivid picture of running, amen? And he says, let us run with patience. In other words, don't, don't, don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush and burn yourself out. He says to run this race at your own pace because guess what? You're not racing against anybody else. Run this at your own. I, I know your, your brother is getting blessed. I know so-and-so is prospering. I know so-and-so got a new job, but it's not your race to compete against them. God is not calling you to catch up to them. God is calling you to run your own race, to run with patience. See, because this race, listen to this, is not a sprint. It's a marathon. And this marathon, it goes beyond. It doesn't end in 2020. And this goes beyond 2020. And this race that you're on, uh, it, it goes beyond. It, it, it can't be limited to, to a number. And sometimes when we focus just on 2020, we can, we can be limiting to what God is trying to show us down the road. And that 2020 is simply a preparation for what God is going to do in your life in the next five years. But you have to run with patience. You might not get to it this year. You might not see the results that you want this year. But run with patience. Be patient. Be patient. Don't quit. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Be patient. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but be patient. God is saying be patient. Be patient with your blessing. I know you see everybody else being blessed. I know you look to the right and to the left, and you're, you're looking at everybody else run their race, and they're being blessed, and you're waiting for yours. But God says be patient because it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. My God, somebody say it's coming. I feel that it's coming. My breakthrough is coming. My breakthrough is coming. The miracle is coming for my family. Miracle is coming to my household. I've been running. I've been running. I've been running. I know I've been running. I've been running. It is coming. God says you've been faithful. Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Just keep believing. Keep trusting him. Keep trusting him. When you can't see the finish line, but faith says, I see the finish line. I can trust them because I see the finish line. I see the result that I'm looking for. I see the blessing. I see the blessing. I see the break. I see the mirror. I see it. It says, let us lay aside. It says, like a runner. He says, like a runner. Let us lay aside every weight. He's speaking to these people, but... but the Holy Spirit speaking to us this morning. He says, let us, let us, let us lay aside every weight. 
or everything that has weighed you down, everything that has held you, that, that, that you've been carrying, that, that has made the race, that has made you running with the vision hard, everything that has weighed you down, everything that's made it difficult, that, that wore you out, all the weight. God says, lay aside the weight. Not only the weight, it says, and the sin. And the sin. And the sin. The sin that produced the weight. How many know that the weight just don't show up? You don't just wake up in the morning and... God, where did this come from? Look in the mirror. Where where'd this come from? The weight came from Thanksgiving, remember? The weight came from, remember, Christmas Eve, that, that pozole? Remember? That second bowl? Remember? The weight came on New Year. Remember that, 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 that uh, uh, what is it called, the elephant ears? Something produced the weight. He says, let us lay aside the weight, but not only the weight, the thing that produced the weight, the drama that's in your life. The drama, the baby mama drama that's, that's been weighing you down. The baby mama drama that's, that's been, been making it this difficult for you to run, for you to see vision. But not only the drama, how about the sin that produced the drama? How about the sin that produced it? It says, laid aside the sin, the sin, the sin, the sin. I know vision is supposed to be about us getting cars and us getting, getting blessed. I know, maybe, the, maybe let, let me, God, God is going to bless you this year. Uh, is that more, more, more pleasing to the ears? God is going to bless you. God is... You know, I, I, I can say that, right? I, I can come up here and just say and, and just speak blessing, but, but, but God has a different direction for us. Amen? The blessing's there, but, but they're in the process. There's a process that you have to take. There's a process that God, God is calling you to undergo before you get there. Because if God gives you the blessing in the condition that you're in, guess what? It's going to destroy you. It's going to mess you up. He says... Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily, easily, it's not even work anymore to do it. The devil don't even have to tempt you to do it anymore. It's easy, which so easily besets us, it's knocked us off course. 2019, something's knocked you off course. 2019, something kept you from, from running with vision and being who God has called you to be. And God is saying that today, not tomorrow, today we have to lay this aside. Amen? See, if you want to run with the vision that God has given you for your life, I was going to say you, but you know what? I don't, I don't want to preach down to you. We have to lay aside. We have to lay aside some stuff. If, if we want to run with the vision, and I'm saying we because I'm in this boat with you, amen? I'm saying we because I'm in this foxhole with you. I'm fighting this thing right along with you, amen? We have to lay down some stuff. We have to lay aside some stuff this year. How many want to run with the vision? My God. How many are ready to run with the vision? God is getting ready. Not on, you know what? I'm not saying that. God, it's not God is getting ready to take it off of you. God is saying you have to do it. He says you have to do it. That habit, the Bible says that you are free indeed already. So now that habit's a choice. Now it's a choice for you to step out of that thing. It says let us, let us lay aside. And I, I, I looked this, this word up, lay aside, amen? I do do a little bit of studying, amen? I don't just come up here and wing it, you know? I, I do a, a little bit of studying, amen? The, the word lay aside, it, it doesn't mean for, for you just to lay something aside, just to, to put it down. 
within reach. It doesn't mean for you to lay something aside and, but, but still have access to it. See, some of us, we, we lay things aside and, and we, we get to a point of desperation and we get to a point of brokenness and, and we get to this point of hurt and we, we, we make this commitment to God and we make this promise, God, I, I lay it aside. I lay aside the, the stuff. I lay aside the junk, the hindrance. But we lay it aside within reach. We lay it aside, but we can still access to it. See, the, but the, the word lay aside, what, what Paul is saying, the word lay aside, it, it doesn't mean just to put something down. It means to, to lay it so far away from you, out of reach. It means to lay it so far away from you that you cannot access it anymore. My God, my God, some of us need to lay aside some stuff. Some of us need to, my God, lay aside some stuff. It's a decision. It's a decision. The weight might be people. The weight might be a situation. The weight might be what people said about you. The weight might be what you think about yourself. The weight might be the lies that the enemy has been feeding you. The weight might be your family history. The weight might be sickness. But God is saying today, he's calling you. This is the word. I feel this right now. This is the word. If you don't get anything else, this is the word. Lay it aside. Lay it aside, the pity. Lay it aside, the apathy. Lay it aside. Because God is calling you further. The vision is for you to walk further. The vision for you is to be whole. There's a greater vision than what you're seeing now. You're greater than what you see now. My God. You're more than what you see now. There's more in you than what you see. There's a promise in you that you don't see, but it's in you. There's a word in you that you don't see, but it's in you. But there's some stuff that's weighed you down. It's weighed us down. It's weighed us down. Some doubt, even some doubt, some unbelief. Let us lay aside. Lay aside. Somebody just go like this. Spiritually, by faith, just whatever it is. You already know what it is. You already know what it is. As I'm speaking, you already know what it is. Nobody has to tell you. The Holy Spirit will bring, will, will, will let you know. Just right now, by faith, say, Father, I'm laying this aside out of reach. This habit, this addiction, this sin. I'm laying it aside. I love this stuff. I love the word of God. Father, thank you for your word. Can someone give me my water? I'm thirsty. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you, baby. I love the word of God, amen? Amen. I'm passionate about the word of God. And, you know, yesterday I went with with Pastor Calvin to a leadership conference. Me and him, he got us there safely. And I kept an eye on him. It wasn't much traffic, but I I did keep an eye on his driving. I give him a B. (laughs) A couple times he got too deep in the word and and it started veering off. I'm like, Holy Ghost. I'm like, I'm like Jesus. He, he thought I was into the preaching. He thought I was into the preaching. No, I was praying. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm just messing around. But <laughs> 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 
bless God. Amen. Hallelujah. I love this. You know, in, in Paul's day, it says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us. In, in Paul's day, um, runners, runners, when they would run this race, these athletes, this was like during the Olympic time. This is a lot of the analogies that Paul writes in the, in the, in the Bible are from things that he, he saw in person. So, he, you know, the old school Greek, Greek athletes and the, the Olympics. So, so, so those, those type of athlete, athletes, Paul was seeing all that stuff. So he was, he was putting that when he was writing. He was using analogies. Amen? But in, in Paul's day, runners, when they would, when they would run their races, they would, they would do what they had to do to lose weight. They would do what they had to do so that they can run their races effectively. So they wouldn't get tired, so they can run faster, so they can run further. Amen? And, and I, I was laughing when I read this. Because it, it says that, that these runners, that they would go to the extent of, of stripping naked. They, they would strip naked. It's okay to laugh. Go ahead and laugh. Let it out. I know we immature. That's okay. You don't got to be mature. <laughs> they would strip naked. I mean, they, they, would, they would take their clothes off, their garments, so that, they, so that the, the clothes wouldn't weigh them down because they wanted to run faster. So, you know, I'm not telling anybody <laughs> <laughs> that you got to run naked. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that. That's not what I'm saying. Please don't get that interpretation. Carlos, zip that sweater back up, sir. <laughs> Carlos says, shoot. <laughs> like, shoot, I'm about to run with this vision. <laughs> he says, shoot, I'm about to run. <laughs> Carlos, it is 10 degrees outside, sir. <laughs> I love Carlos. That's my brother. That's my brother. I tell him, Carlos, I'm preaching next Sunday. He's like, man, I ain't coming. <laughs> I ain't coming. <laughs> I do that because I love you, man. And I know, I know you can take it, more, more importantly. Amen? I know you can take it because I've seen what you've gone through in your spiritual walk. I've seen the, the straw. I've seen the highs, the lows. I've seen what you've gone through, so I, I know you can take a little joke. Amen? <laughs> now, the rest of y'all. <laughs> If I ain't joking with you, there's a reason. <laughs> you probably get you offended and you cry. And it's just a little joke, man. I'm trying to, it's a little joke, man. Pastor, he hurt my feelings. And he's supposed to be a pastor and all this stuff. So let's get back to this word, amen? These men would what? What would they do? They, they strip naked because they, they didn't want the, the clothes, the excess weight. And then they would, they would even go to the extent, listen to this, they would go to the extent of dieting. They would put themselves on diets. They would lose weight. They would, they would lose weight so that the, 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 the pastor would call them yantas, right? They, they wanted to lose weight because even physically, they, they didn't want anything to hinder their progress. They didn't want anything to slow them down on this race. They wanted to run faster. They wanted to run further. They wanted to run farther. They wanted, they wanted to finish the race, and they would do what they had to do. Then I started thinking. These men, they would, they would diet. They would... They would Restrict what they ate. They would limit what they ate for a purpose. For the purpose of running faster and farther. Somebody say fasting. Fasting will help you run your race. Fasting will help you to run with the vision. Fasting will help you. Amen? Fasting will help you to run faster and farther. Fasting will help you. Why? Because when you fast, 
there's a loosening of some weight. When you fast, there's a loosening of some chains. There's a loosening of some sin. There's a loosening of some habits. There's some loosening of some stuff that has been weighing you down. There's a loosening. There's a release that's happening when you fast. There's a release. There's a whatever's been weighing you down, habits, sin, pride, it's been released. Amen. There's a loosening. Isaiah 58, 6. Put it up there real fast. Isaiah 58, 6. Thank you, sir. This was God speaking through the prophet. This was God speaking. This is God speaking about fasting. It says, he said, is this not the fast that I've chosen? To what? Somebody say loose. Say it loud. Say it loud. Loose. To loose the bands of wickedness. I'm sorry, I got that, that Marine came back out. I'm sorry. <laughs> to, to loose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. So look at this. When you, when you fast, this is why it's so important. It. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it's a sacrifice. Yes, you might not feel good. But when you fast, there's a loosening that's happening in your life. Of what? Of, of wickedness. You know those thoughts? You know those dreams? You know those habits? You know that stuff that you fall back into? It loosens the bands. When you fast, it loosens the bands of wickedness. Then it what? It undoes what? The heavy burdens. And then what does it do when you fast? And it says, and to let the what? The oppressed go. Somebody say free. free. Somebody say free. free. Listen to this. The vision that God has for you in 2020 is for you to be free. It's for you to be free. It's your freedom. Can I say that, that God's vision is your life is freedom? It's not for you to be filthy rich. It's not for you to have five houses. It's not. Can I, can I say this very carefully too? That God's vision for this church is not even for us to have a building. It's for us to be free from the need of a building. It's for you to be free from needs. It's for you to be so satisfied and content in God that there is no other need. You so immersed in God's love, you so satisfied that there is no need. I don't need money. I don't need a mate. I don't need a husband. I got Jesus. I'm free. My soul is free. My mind is free. My heart is free. There's some free people in this place. It doesn't matter if the building never comes. Guess what? We're free. God, is the vision is for you to be free. The calling is for you to be free. Amen? Somebody say free. free. Somebody say, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. And we have one week left. Amen? On this fast. I'm, I'm, listen, I, I, we're talking, me and Pastor, we're talking just fasting, but previously, fast. I mean, what God is doing, just the excitement. I feel, I, I've done fast. I've been 16 years in this church, and I fasted every time, and I feel like this is, like this one, there's a pursuit. This one, there's a hunger. Because I know how aggressive the enemy has been. I know what, what the enemy has been doing. I, I know the attacks. I know when the enemy attacks me. I know the pressures. I, I, know, I know when the enemy's aggressive. So when I enter this fast, I say, you know what? I'm going to be aggressive too. I'm entering this fast aggressively. Devil, everything that you try to put on me is being broken off of me. Every lie is being broken off of my family. Every lie, every, every, every curse that you try to put on my family lineage, every curse that you try to put on my bloodline, it is broken. It is broken. That's why I've been fasting. And it's okay. Listen, if you haven't been fasting, it's okay. I don't want you to feel ostracized. But we still got a week. 
If you stopped, it's okay. You can still get back on. But listen, I want you to know is that you got some people, even though maybe fasting ain't for you. I want to let you know today that you got people in here that are fasting for you. Amen? I want to let you know. I know pastor's heart. I know, I know how he prays and who he calls out. You got some people. I've been fasting, not only for me and my family, but I've been fasting for you. I've been fasting for you. I've been calling your names out. Al, I've been calling you out. I've been declaring God's freedom over you. I've been declaring his will over you and over your family. I've been calling some people out. Danny, I've been calling you out, sir. I've been praying for you, man. I've been fasting that God will bless your family, that God will bless your marriage. Because I believe this thing. I believe this thing. I believe this stuff is not just, just words to me. If, if God, this is God, I said this is God, this is God speaking. If God is saying this, I'm going to believe it. I'm going to believe this thing. This is not a game. This is not a game. This is not a game. This is, I don't just come to church. We don't, we're not just supposed to just come to church and oh, give me something feel good message. No, the word God is speaking to you. When he speaks, he requires action. Because it's in your action, it's in your action and response to the word that produces results. See, you've been just listening to words and waiting for results. You haven't seen the results because there's no action on your part. And in order for you to see results, there has to be some action. Somebody say action Jackson. Jackson. Action Jack uh, Jackson. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to finish this message. And I'm not even I, done with my first page, amen? How many have been blessed, though? How many are blessed by the, by the word? But I do, I got what, I got 10 minutes? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish here. Yeah, that's good. There's some, some, some good stuff, amen? Uh, Hebrews 12, let's go to verse 2. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord, for your freedom. Thank you, Lord, for, for your grace. And Paul said, after verse 1, he says, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Let, let me stop right there, Rufus. He says, looking unto Jesus. In other words, turn away from everything that tries to get your attention. Turn away from everything that has distracted you. See, looking, when, you, when looking, it, it, it means to be so focused, so intent, where everything else is invisible. Where you're so intent so turned that you turn away from everything else. So focused that it doesn't matter who's running beside you. It doesn't matter what's going on around you. Your eyes are on Jesus. And I believe with all my heart that God is calling this church to a renewed focus. To renewed focus, not to focus. Don't stop looking at what other churches are doing. Stop looking at, at what they're doing, what they're getting. Stop looking. Because that, that Facebook is something else. That social media is something else. God, I look to Jesus, but you spend an hour looking at everybody else. God, what they doing? Wow, what they doing? And now you, you're so focused on everybody else, now you're comparing yourself to what you see. 
Now you're comparing yourself. Now you're upset. God, why are they getting in and not us? But Jesus says, renew your focus. It's not an issue with them. Let me do what I'm doing with them. Now he told Peter, Peter, feed my lamb. Peter was, 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 was speaking to Jesus, and, and, and he's like, what, what about these guys? What about these guys? What, what are you going to do with them? And, 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 and Jesus told Peter, don't worry about them. Focus on me. There's a mission that I've given you. There's a calling that I've given you. I need you to focus on me. Keep your eyes on me because there's going to be things that will try to distract you. And they don't necessarily have to be bad things, sin and stuff. It could be good things. Jesus said the cares of this world are what will take our heart. It snatches the word. The cares, they're not bad things. They're good things. Things we care about. But we so, could be so in a need and we so, can be so distracted by, by our cares, things that we want, that we lose focus on what God is trying to do. Amen? It says, looking unto Jesus, who for the joy, I'm going to finish up with this. This is where it gets good. Amen? This is where, where the message gets good right here. He says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Somebody say, endured the cross. Jesus, this is Jesus. He says, look at Jesus. He's your example. He says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured. So there was a joy that was set before him. Remember, set before speaks about future. It speaks about dust. It speaks about vision. There was something that Jesus envisioned that helped him to endure what he was going through. There was a joy that Jesus envisioned. He saw a joy. Jesus saw a joy, had a vision of this joy that gave him the endurance. What was this joy? Can I ask you, what, what was this joy? It, it was you. It was seeing us here. It was us. It was seeing you saved. It was seeing you washed, seeing you forgiven, seeing you here worshiping God, seeing you here free, seeing you here liberated. It was seeing you here, seeing us here loving each other, loving each other, forgiving each other, extending mercy. That brought God joy. That brought Jesus joy. Jesus had a vision. And the vision, listen to this, it was the vision that gave him the motivation that he needed to endure the cross. It was the vision that gave him the motivation to endure the beatings and to endure the whippings and to endure the cursing and to endure the slapping and the ridicule and be made fun of. It was the vision that he had that gave him the motivation to endure the hanging when he hung on that cross for six hours bleeding from his pores bleeding from his body it was the vision that gave him the motivation when he was pierced in his side it was the vision that gave him the motivation when he was denied by Peter when he was denied by his followers see it's the vision that God has given you that will give you the motivation to endure your cross. My God, it's the vision that God has given you that will give you the motivation to endure what you're going through, to endure the waiting periods, to endure waiting on God. God, when is it going to happen? God, I've been waiting. It's the vision that gives you the motivation to hang in there. It's the vision that gives you the motivation to endure, to endure the season, to endure the trial. It's the vision. That's why vision is so important. Because vision gives you the joy. It gives you the motivation to keep seeking God. To keep fighting. To keep warring. 
You've been denied. You've been denied. People denied you. You went for a loan, you got denied. You got denied and you got denied, but, it, but it's okay because I got vision. Somebody say vision. And when I got vision, I got all the motivation that I need. I got all the motivation that I need to keep fighting, to keep enduring, amen? Can, can you can lower that just a little bit? Can, can I help you to get clarity this morning on, on vision? Who wants clarity this morning? Let me ask you a question. What is your joy? Or in, in 2020, what will bring you the most joy if you saw it? What will bring you the most joy this year if you saw it? What is it? Is, your, is it your marriage? being restored? Is it your marriage being healed? Is it your marriage prospering? Your marriage growing spiritually? Is it your family being blessed financially? Is it seeing your husband sitting right next to you, worshiping God with you? Is it seeing your husband sitting there, lifting his hands in love with Jesus? Is it seeing your kids loving God? Is it seeing your kids loving and worshiping right alongside with you? Is it seeing you free from addiction, drugs? Is it seeing you free from pornography? Is it seeing you free from sin? What is your vision? See, I'm just trying to paint vision. See, because when you have vision, you have all the motivation that you need. When you have vision, you don't need someone to pat you on the back. You don't need someone to encourage you. You don't need someone to tell you you can do it. You don't need a prophetic word. Because you got vision. And vision is all the motivation that you need. Vision is all the motivation that you need to pray. Vision is all the motivation that you need to fast. To fast and to keep fasting and to keep praying and to keep believing Vision. Vision. I'm going to end it with this. The, the word, with the word joy. There's something about the word joy. Listen to this. God's vision will always require God. God's vision will always require God and God's grace will always require God's grace because God's vision is always going to be bigger than you. It's going to seem impossible to you. It's going to seem like it's never going to happen. It's going to seem beyond your limitations. And his vision, in order for it to come to pass, will always require grace. See, the word joy, listen to this. I did a study on this. Powerful. The word joy in the Greek is the word kara. The C-H-A-R-A, if you want to look it up. The word kara, and it, is, it comes from the root word, comes from the root word charis. C-H-A-R-I-S, which is the word grace. So you have joy that's rooted in in grace. You have joy that's rooted in saying, God, I need you. A joy that's rooted in saying, God, I can't do this without you. I can't make it without you. I'm nothing without you. God, I need you. God, I need you to show up. God, I need you to break through. God, I need you to heal. I need you to restore. I need you to save. I need you to provide. A joy that's rooted in you being positioned in grace. Amen. 
This year, stay in position. This year, stay in position. Stay in a position of grace. See, because if you step out of grace, you rob yourself of joy. When you step out of grace and when you try to do it on your own and you try to fix it yourself, come on. 2019, I try to fix some things myself. 2019, I try to fix myself myself. I saw some things, I mean, I try to do it myself, but guess what? The more I try to do it on my own, the more I stepped out of grace, and the more I stepped out of grace, the more I robbed myself of joy. Stay in a position of grace. Keep your dependency on Jesus. Keep your dependency on the Lord this year, church. This year. Because God has something for you. The joy, God has joy. God has joy for your marriage. Ileana, God has joy for your life. He did not call you to live a miserable life. He did not call you to walk in sadness. But he called you to enjoy his relationship with you, with him. And I just pray joy over your life that's rooted in grace and trusting God and cling on him, cling on him. That's what grace means. It means to lean on him with all your, your, your attributes, your personality, to lean on him with all of your mind, lean on him and for your business. It's not going anywhere because God is in control. It's not going anywhere because God is your provider. God is your provider. God, I pray grace over her. I pray grace over her right now, repositioning, a repositioning. 2019, there wasn't joy in some areas. There wasn't joy in this walk anymore. There wasn't joy in your worship. There wasn't joy in your praise. But God said, God is saying, reposition yourself, Ileana. Get back in the position of grace. Because joy flows from the grace. Joy flows from grace. Joy is rooted in grace. Joy is rooted in you depending on me. Joy is rooted in you trusting in me. Trust in me and watch me do it. Trust in me. Hope in me. Hope in me. Hope in me. Father, now I speak joy over your people. Father, I speak joy, and even though I wasn't able to finish, I thank you that what I was released, God, was good enough, Father. What was released, God, is a blessing. Father, I prayed. I've been asking you, Father. I've been praying, God, that this word would change someone's life, Father, God. I've been asking you, Father, that this wouldn't just be a sermon, that this wouldn't just be a message, God. But these words would give life. That these words would give hope again. That these words would restore faith. That these words, Father God, would cause your people to seek you and want you like they've never wanted you before. So I pray, Father, right now, that you release vision in their lives. That you bless them that this word would, would speak to them, God, throughout this week, Father God, that you, Holy Spirit, would minister to their lives. Let this word not fall to the ground, Lord. Let it not fall upon bad soil, but let it bear fruit. Spirit of God, let it bear fruit. Let it bear fruit. And Father, in every heart, especially in those hearts, Father, that have become hardened, Father, especially in those hearts, Father, that have become, that have become cold. And Father, uh, uh, without response, irresponsive. Father, I pray that you would touch hearts, that you would heal their hearts. And Father, I pray, God, that you would impregnate them with the joy of the Lord. Father, 2020, I declare joy. 2020, I declare joy. 2020, I declare the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord will see you through the trial. The joy of the Lord will see you through your finish line. 
If you trust in him, if you believe in him, if you cling to him this year, he'll see you past the finish line. Because that's the God that we serve. That's the God that I serve. He is faithful. He is so good. You are so wonderful. You are so awesome. You are so worthy. You're so beautiful. You're so lovely, God. You're so amazing, God. Oh, God, you are great, God. You're awesome and incredible, God. Father, before we leave, God, Father, I just want to praise you, and I just want to bless you. And I just want to thank you for vision. Thank you for vision. Thank you for clarity. Thank you for saving for saving us, for setting us free. And God, what you're doing through this fast, God, God, we don't even see it. We don't even see because your word says that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than what we ask or think. And I think that what you're doing through this fast, Father God, is beyond, Father, our ability, God, to comprehend is beyond our ability, God, to ask. It's beyond our ability to see. But, Father, we thank you. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for healing. We thank you for loved ones being saved. We thank you, God. We thank you that the vision is for freedom and the vision is for salvation. The vision is for deliverance. The vision is for restoration. And, Father, we just ask for your grace. Father, to keep our eyes focused on Jesus, to keep looking uh, upon Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And God, we just praise you right now. We thank you right now, God, with all of our hearts, God. And we love you right now with all the faculties of our being, Father. We love you, Father. We adore you, Father. We worship you. We worship you. And we thank you. And we bless you. In Jesus' name. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap. Put a hand clap. Put a hand clap.